An LLM trained on textbooks has beaten models with a thousand times the size of the training data, and OpenAI is considering launching an app store. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. Well, once again, Tuesday has lived up to its reputation as the biggest news day in AI, and we kick off today with a report from The Information that OpenAI is considering launching a new AI app store. Right now, of course, there are many, many companies that are building on top of OpenAI's models. Enterprise customers, of course, take those general models and customize them for their specific use cases. Silicon Valley-based publication The Information has reported that last month in a meeting with developers, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman said that they were considering creating an app store that would make it easier for those enterprise partners to offer their custom AI models to other buyers. Now, one concern that some have brought up is that this might compete with other enterprise AI app stores such as Salesforce and Microsoft, but it also makes sense from OpenAI's perspective. According to the report, companies like Aquant and Khan Academy were some of those who had lined up to potentially make offerings on this new marketplace. The information's Jessica Lesson yesterday posted on LinkedIn, Seems we've entered a new phase of the AI wars, the fight to be made gatekeeper. My colleagues had an important scoop today on it. Made me curious where you all think we are in the AI supercycle. Of the people who responded to her poll, 83% said we are just beginning. And when it comes to the market's response, I think Amir Afradi summed it up pretty well. Tired, he writes, ChatGPT plugins. Wired, customized ChatGPT models trained on proprietary data. Next up, an interesting story on the geopolitics of AI. The U.S. for the last couple of years has been putting ever-increasing pressure on the Chinese market to deny them access to advanced chips and bring the semiconductor manufacturing industry back home to the U.S., and it appears that that's having an impact in domestic markets. Reuters today released a report about China's underground market for high-end NVIDIA chips, where NVIDIA's AI chips are going for double what the price is in other places of the world where they are not denied access. Now, they're not technically illegal in China, but it seems like the local market is still trying to avoid the scrutiny of either U.S. or Chinese authorities. Speaking of chips, Cisco has announced a new AI networking chip, the Silicon One, which is meant to compete in the most rigorous AI and machine learning environments. And when it comes to AI-native products, Opera has announced Opera One with built-in Area GPT. They're calling it the first AI-native web browser. And just based on the discourse we've seen over the last couple of months, there seems like there's going to be a lot of competition in this space of browsers that are retrofitted and reimagined for a chat GPT-style interface. Now, when it comes to chatbots like ChatGPT and the AI that underlie them, one of the big questions is, of course, just how advanced are they? Ever since 1950, when Alan Turing came up with it, the Turing test has been a key benchmark for just how advanced any sort of computing system is. Well, now Mustafa Suleiman, the founder of DeepMind and Inflection AI, has proposed a new kind of Turing test for today's advanced AI. When it comes to the Turing test, Mustafa said, quote, It's totally unclear whether this is a meaningful milestone or not. It doesn't tell us anything about what the system can do or understand, anything about whether it has established complex inner monologues or can engage in planning over abstract time horizons, which is key to human intelligence. Mustafa has a new book coming out called The Coming Wave, Technology, Power, and the 21st Century's Greatest Dilemma. And in it, he argues that we should be focused on whether AI has achieved what he calls artificial capable intelligence, in which programs can set goals and achieve complex tasks with minimal human intervention. ACI, then, is kind of what we've all wanted out of our AutoGPT tools. To measure whether a machine has achieved artificial capable intelligence, Mustafa proposes an updated modern Turing test. In his model, you would give an AI $100,000 and see if it can turn that investment into $1 million. Given that, the bot would have to research e-commerce businesses, generate blueprints for a product, find a manufacturer, sell the item, etc., etc. Now, I'm not sure if this is the right way to look at AI or if this is the right test to determine its advanced capabilities. I will only note that as people have gotten excited about autonomous AI agents, lots of us have explored similar types of use cases. I did a video a couple months ago, for example, called Can AutoGPT Grow a 10K YouTube Channel? So it'll be interesting to see if people pick up on this new Turing test as something that we should actually organize around. Finally today, in the debate around whether more advanced LLMs require ever-increasing sizes of data to train on, a new LLM called Phi1 has achieved better performance than GPT 3.5 with less than one one-thousandth of the training data of some of its comparable peers. Phi1 achieved 51% human eval, which is higher than GPT 3.5's 47%, although lower than GPT 4's 67%, and Wizard Coder's 57.3%. However, as researcher Sebastian Bubeck puts it, any other greater than 50% human eval model is greater than 1,000% bigger, e.g. Wizard Coder from last week is 10x in model size and 100x in data size. Phi1 achieved its 51% on human eval with only 1.3 billion parameters and a 7 billion token training data set. 
The secret was apparently training the model on textbooks, and it appears that the quality of that data that it was trained on made a big difference. We will explore more of the implications of this in a future video about data sets and training sizes, but for now, a pretty exciting experiment to see. That's it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.